A lot of times we think about putting on sunscreen when it's summer or we're going to the beach, but it's actually really important to wear sunscreen anytime you're stepping out into the sun, regardless of the season. Sunscreen is important for protecting your skin, but there are a lot of options. In this video, I talk to dermatologists about what SPF means, the different types of sunscreen, and how to make sure you're applying enough. Sunscreen doesn't just prevent sunburns, it can also block long-term skin damage. Over time, when our skin is exposed to the ultraviolet or UV radiation, um, it can cause damage to our skin that leads to changes like early aging, um, dark spots, fine lines, wrinkles, but most importantly, skin cancer, which affects many millions of Americans every year. This applies to people of all skin types and tones. Dermatologists say the most important factor when choosing a sunscreen is making sure it has a sun protection factor, or SPF, of 30 or higher. It's also important for a sunscreen to offer broad spectrum protection, which means it protects against both UVA and UVB rays. UVA and UVB rays are the two types of harmful rays from the sun that reach the Earth. UVA rays can age your skin prematurely and cause wrinkles and age spots. UVB rays, on the other hand, are the primary cause of sunburn. Overexposure to either UVA or UVB rays can lead to skin cancer. When you're shopping for sunscreen, there are two types to choose from, physical sunscreen and chemical sunscreen. Physical sunscreen sits on the surface of your skin and works like a shield to deflect the sun's rays. It includes active ingredients like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This is a good choice if you have sensitive skin. Chemical sunscreen works like a sponge to absorb the sun's rays. It includes active ingredients like oxybenzone and avobenzone. Chemical sunscreen can be easier to rub into your skin and doesn't tend to leave a white residue like physical sunscreens might. Both physical and chemical sunscreens are considered equally effective in protecting your skin from the sun, so it typically just comes down to personal preference. Another really important consideration is making sure you're applying enough sunscreen. To cover the entire surface of your body, the FDA recommends applying at least one ounce of sunscreen, or the amount it takes to fill a shot glass. If you're just covering your hands and face, you'd obviously use less. And remember to reapply every two hours or immediately after swimming or excessively sweating. In addition to lotion sunscreens, you can also opt for stick or spray sunscreens. If you go with either of these options, remember to still rub in the sunscreen after you've applied it to make sure you're getting an even layer of coverage. Even if you have the right sunscreen or the best sunscreen, um, if you're not using the adequate amount, you're really not getting um, the adequate protection. These guidelines apply throughout the year, even if it's cold or overcast. Those UV rays from the sun are still penetrating the clouds and getting to your skin. So we do recommend sunscreen um, pretty much all times of year, certainly any time that you will be outside longer, which tends to be in the spring and summer months. Um, and also anytime you're at high altitude, because again, the UV rays are able to reach your skin more easily than if you're at lower altitude. Lots of makeup products will also have SPF built into them like foundations or CC creams, but it's important to check whether that SPF number is high enough to protect your skin from sun damage. Many cosmetic products may only have an SPF of 15 or 20, which for day-to-day -day use may be okay, but again, if you really want to get the level of protection to prevent against early skin aging and skin cancer, um, you do need an SPF of at least 30. And so I would recommend applying sunscreen uh, with SPF 30 or higher initially, and then applying your makeup product with the additional SPF factor if you are gonna be out for an extended period of time. No sunscreen will completely block UV radiation, which means it's important to take other precautions like wearing protective clothes or sunglasses or staying in the shade. Avoid being outside during the sunniest parts of the day, which tend to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wear long sleeve clothing that isn't too sheer or clothes that have a built-in UV protection factor. Hats can protect your face, neck, and ears from excess sun exposure. There have been some discussions around potential health concerns involving chemical sunscreens. Studies from a few years ago suggested the active ingredients in those sunscreens were being absorbed into the bloodstream. As of now, we don't have any good evidence suggesting that they are indeed harmful to human health, but more on that to come, I'm sure. 
Wang says more studies are ongoing to determine any potential risks, but if someone has health concerns and wants to play it safe, mineral sunscreens containing zinc oxide or titanium dioxide have been deemed generally safe and effective by the FDA. Ultimately, you'll need some form of protection to block against immediate and future sun damage. Just because you're not getting a sunburn doesn't mean you're not getting hit with UV that's causing damage and that may cause damage long term over time. Well, that's enough to convince me to keep this close. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content from CNET.